I don't know if they can hear me out there, but if they can, that's, that's a good thing. We are live with another purge of the BS. I am right back here. It's your boy, Hayes, and you know it's another rainy, crazy day with additional BS that must be purged. Glad to see y'all, anybody that could join in. Sorry about the other live stream issue, issue that was miscommunication. So, as anybody knows with technology, there's a missing communication. Yeah, things happen. So, today we're going to get together. I just wanted to talk really quickly. Um, in reference to some things that I've seen recently, you know how I am. I got to bring the, uh, you know, bring the pain, as they say. To a degree because I've noticed the sudden uptick in what people would call what is it like attention I don't want to call it attention deficit disorder it's like an attention need disorder I guess it's um it's got a whole a whole psychological thing to it where you just you crave attention positive or negative at all times in order to validate yourself to get a dopamine hit in your head so that you feel good. And, I mean, everybody wants to feel good, so I guess there's not anything necessarily wrong with that. But there's a, a, a slew of people in the world who have just recently started taking things a little bit too far. And, you know, somebody had brought me a particular story um, regarding... Her name Jojo Siwa. I don't know if you guys know who Jojo Siwa is. Let me bring her up here. Bear with me. Jojo Siwa. Let me bring on. So. <coughs> If y'all can see who this is, uh, this is uh, JoJo, JoJo Siwa, and apparently she's going viral right now because she decided to wear this interesting outfit that uh, includes kind of a male chesty nipple thing going on here, and she's got a little package that she's packing, and I don't know if the package is. I mean, it's it's. It's it's not really a package. Like she she's a she's a female, I believe, or at least I think she is, or at least she she identifies as a female so, or woman. We're not even gonna get into that discussion. But basically, she was asked about her uh, recent cover on this Lady Gun magazine. I've never read Lady Gun or anything like that, but. I'm not really sure what's going on. I don't know if I want to turn the pages in there because I'm not sure what kind of lady gun they got in. I don't know. I'm sure somebody's read it before, but I've never seen it before, and I, I don't think I'll peruse the pages. But nonetheless, when JoJo had said in response to the negative uh, internet virality that came along with this was that she didn't want to be, you know, a liar when she said that she wants attention at all times like feeds her she literally said that like she thinks of ways to get attention just negative or positive it doesn't matter as long as people are talking about her thinking about her and that brought me to you know kind of you know kind of just really just trying to figure out why is why is everybody so focused on everybody thinking about them like I, I'm not saying I don't want anybody to think about me, but I don't want everybody thinking about me. Like, I don't want people really paying that much attention, you know? And some people, if they don't have people paying attention, it's like they feel like they're not even alive. And that's the part of it that kind of got me really bugged out. I was like, what do you mean, like, you don't feel like you're alive, right? So I started Googling. You know how I be doing stuff. I'm a Googler. You know, I'm a Googler. And I found out that there is actually a, uh, a disorder 
called? What is this called here? Histrionic, histrionic personality disorder, which is a chronic and enduring psychiatric condition characterized by a consistent pattern of pervasive attention-seeking behaviors and exaggerated emotional displays. You always got to be the one that everybody's thinking about when everything ain't always about you. The condition is usually lifelong, meaning it'll never go away. And it's treatment resistant, meaning no matter what you try, you're still just that. With onset typically, typically in late adolescence or early uh, adulthood. So that's actually pretty interesting to me because it's saying that when you're in your late teens, early adult time, you might be uh, subject to what's known as histrionic personality disorder so what I, I guess with the term histrionic it makes me think like you got history messed up you got the you got the, the whole game is messed up in your head right but the fact of the real matter is it's a mental disorder like they've actually characterized this as a mental disorder as just a person who always needs attention has a mental disorder they can be overindulgent, flirtatious, dramatic, extroverted, animated, may feel underappreciated and disregarded when they are not the center of attention. Mm. Individuals with HPD can be vibrant, enchanting, overly seductive, or inappropriately sexual. They may typically demonstrate rapidly shifting and shallow emotions that others may perceive as insincere. So... If you have histrionic personality disorder, HPD as it's called, for those who've, who, who are well studied, because I had never heard of it. I thought it was just the person just being a dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, just always got to be, you know, everybody got to bow down to what they want to do all the time. Like, come on, man. It ain't always about you. Sometimes it's about other people. And sometimes it's about other people being able to be whoever they are, you know. Each of us has a space, right? And within that space, if we operate within our, you know, like our better wits, then people will get to see the best of what we have. But if we get into this space and all we're looking for is just the attention itself and what comes along with that, eventually it becomes lonely because there's only so much attention can do. Attention isn't love. It's just attention. It's like paparazzi. They don't really like you, but they follow you. They're always around you like a stalker. A stalker can be around you all the time and they might mess around and murder you. So we're not going to put a whole bunch in what a stalker might do. But the point I'm trying to make is attention has also been found scientifically to lower your, 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 your age of dying. Your, 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 what is that? The, the average age or lifespan. There you go. Average lifespan. Sorry about that. I get a little, you know, but nonetheless, so the average lifespan by a number of years, sometimes up to 10 years, just from being overly attention seeking, overly like whenever you're in a room, you must be the center of attention. Even if you know, you know, there's nothing wrong with knowing that you could just take over. Like it's actually, there's a lot of humility to that. When you enter into a room, you're like, you know what? I could just take all of this over and like, this could just this could be mine, but I'm going to remain humble. I'm going to chill in the back and I'm going to just kind of see what the hell's going on, you know, and, 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 and learn from whatever this experience has available for me, as opposed to just coming into it and just being a bull in a China shop or stuff. Now that comes with maturity because I wasn't always like that. So that's an honest truth. But at this point in life, I don't want negative attention like if i'm gonna have attention that's fine you know if people like something i said or did or they respect something that i was working on or something like that that's good attention you know i, I got i got children and grandchildren so i would like the attention to be positive i don't want negative attention i want people to just naturally hate the things i gotta say what i do want to say though is that there is a segment of the population that has gotten the game twisted they really think this shit is all about them. And I've explained this before to folks. The world is always spinning. 
So when we go to sleep at night, right, it keeps going. There's people that work overnight. While you sleep, they work, right? So some folks, for whatever reason, I don't know what it is. Call it vanity. Call it narcissism. I don't know. You pick a, pick a fun word and run with it. But for some reason, they think that, like, the whole world just kind of pauses for a second when they got to rest. Like, you know what? We're going to wait for you to come back because you're so important to the fabric of the entire world, not just your world, because most people are important to at least their family. But the rest of the world doesn't even know you. Like, so you can only be so important. The real important people, you, you know them because they're important. And if people don't really know you to be that important to anything outside of what's tight to you, then, you, you know, you still got stuff to, stuff to work on. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you think you didn't hit it and you already at the level, then no, you, you, you just, you just wasting people's time. So let me get back into my clipper sit. Here. I got a special clip I wanted to uh, play for y'all over here, man. About, you know, since we're talking about folks just craving attention, you know what I'm saying? Give me a second here. Hopefully y'all can hear the audio on these things. If not, please let me know. Now, Brandon, there's no doubt watching it that I felt that the ABC moderators went harder on Trump than they did on Kamala Harris. Francesca, yes. are you eating... You're eating a cat at the moment. Is this uh, something you want to oh. share with the group? I'm sorry, I didn't... <laughs> I, I thought we were still on a clip. I didn't know. I just... <laughs> I, I mean, I heard it was a rumor in Springfield, but it's happening in Los Angeles, too. <laughs> Very good. Mm. Very good. Mm. Let's get back to Brandon. Um, Brandon. Now, special no shouts to um, Brandon uh, Tatum on there. He's, he's a pretty good dude. I watch a lot of his content. So you should check him out. Officer Tatum, I think, it is, is, his, uh, is his channel. But nonetheless, the point that I was making was about the lady over there, right? Because she wanted to get the, the attention on her, she decided to just mimic eating her, her cat because that's what people were talking about at the time with that whole Trump situation. You know, there's nothing wrong with eating cat if you're a cat-eating person. We already know about that. We've discussed this before. But she wasn't doing it because she's that type of person. She was doing it because she knew that it would bring the attention on her, even though the host of the show was literally speaking and trying to make a point. She was making it about herself just to make it almost disrespectful to the point where the host had to stop and say, are you really doing that? Are you really doing that on this show right now? Just so all of a sudden she could get a little couple seconds of fame. And there's nothing wrong with a couple of seconds of fame. There's nothing wrong with it. What is wrong with it is if you start to try to live off of it. Like if you living off the next couple of seconds, that next adrenaline rush, that next dopamine hit, that's where it gets dangerous. That's where it starts to take away from your actual lifespan. If you think, yourself, think of yourself as a battery that has a certain set charge going on in it, right? And at some point, that charge will run out. It will. The more you use up that charge with BS and overdoing it, the less charge you got left. So if you take your energy and invest it in bullshit, then you'll lose time and you'll be losing time for some bullshit. And that to me is worse than the time loss in and of itself is when you lose some time for bullshit. When you use your time effectively and productively, then it's time well spent, right? But if you just use it being... You know, trying to be at the center of the situation when the situation ain't always about you. Sometimes other people have things that they're dealing with that they're not even telling you about. Because you know what? A lot, a lot of times we can be so self-fulfilled, we can't even hear the struggle of someone else and truly interpret that and internalize that. So we just crave, crave, crave. Some people wake up, it's like zombies, like, I must consume energy. I must take from the, the world, literally. Like, they must take from other people's energy in order to survive. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Now, 
with people who take energy, there's also people that give energy, but some people give a little bit too much energy. <laughs> and, you know, I've had, I had this one dude on the show before, and we, we did decide to, uh, I think he was one of our Who's Mans or something like that. I can't remember what the situation was. I really can't. But what I do remember is he was definitely um, a memorable person. So I, I don't know if you guys remember this dude, See the Truth, who um, he was um, he was uh, like, a I guess you call him a motivational speaker. But let's see if See the Truth, see what he's got going on. <sighs> He's out here, is what he said. Get out! Don't do what you said you was gonna do! You can do it! Get out! Okay. Okay, well, see the truth, as you know, he's always telling you that people can do it. Now, personally, like I've said before, I don't really like the whole, he, he takes it to the extreme. But the message is good. You can do it. Stop laying around sitting on your ass. Get up off your ass and do it. But what I don't want people to forget is that in order to do that, you got to motivate yourself. and You got to have a crew around. You got to have a support system. And sometimes that support system is not just yourself. It's like you don't necessarily need people to do everything for you, but some people can help you by just not being in the way of what it is you're trying to do. They don't necessarily have to drive you there, but don't stand in front of the car because I care too much about you to run you over with the vehicle. You see what I'm saying? So you got to also wonder how folks get in front of that vehicle and feel like the person who runs over them somehow in the wrong. That's the way that the mind goes. I'm going to jump in front of a moving train and then blame the train. See, that's, that's a twisted way of thinking, right? Twisted way of thinking. But that's how a lot of folks think. They, they would throw themselves in front of something and then when it hits them, then they're like, I can't believe that that happened. And you're like, well, what else did you think was going to happen? And, you know, a lot of times we, we take these metaphors. I'm not, if, if, if anybody's watching that thinks that I just, like, made a threat on somebody, I'm not even doing that. I like metaphors. They simplify some of my grander ideas, and it makes it a little more digestible for people that may or may not think the same way I do. You see what I'm saying? So... I had to bring in the metaphor, but what I want to bring in and, and, and never forget is why does attention feel so good? Why does it feel so good when you come home and you have a lovely wife or children and family who are happy to see you? That's attention. That's positive attention. And that attention does feel good. Now, also on the flip side, you could have when you walk into a place because you look very menacing, people are paying attention to you. That's attention. I don't know if that feels good. It might feel good to some. Some people like to feel like, oh, man, I run this shit. I'm this nigga, right? Some people. Other people, that's the intention you don't want. It's like people are paying attention to you when they, when you know how a lot of black people will go into the store and people will be watching them. And they'll be like, why are they watching me? Like, I'm going to steal something. And it's because they probably had seen someone steal something before who, in their opinion, looked like that person. So they're like, is that the one that was here before stealing? No? Huh? Okay. Well, nonetheless, nonetheless, I done did my dirty 30. I told y'all already, I'm just here so I don't get fined by the algorithm. But I did want to touch on a specific point about, it ain't all about you, baby. It's about everybody. And everybody out here has a creative space where they're supposed to be doing their thing. And it's not for any of us to cramp anybody else's style. But if you see somebody whose attention segment is negative, stay away from them. 
And the reason why is because that's that bullshit. And you don't want to be involved in the bullshit. The bullshit will, will drag you down. It just really will. That's why I'm here to purge the bullshit. That's why the name of the show is Purge of the Bullshit. And that is what we do here. We do not allow it to just continue. Now, with all of that being said, I was pretty close on this one, but I still can't see the chat. That part I haven't figured out yet. And every time I get to the point where I'm, I'm ready to, to, to shut it down, then all of a sudden the chat starts working. So if anybody was in the chat, appreciate y'all. Anybody that stopped in, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the, hit the, bang the bell. Make sure you come back. I had to run this one in on Humble because like I said, man, I'm just here so I don't get fined. And the algorithm doesn't like it when I don't show up, okay? So for anybody else that is sitting there starving for attention, you might want to just calm yourself down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, yeah. oh that's the music. That's the music. You know what that means, y'all. Gotta go. 